Today in the news, the history repeats itself because we're just a bunch of beta testers. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Ever since AMD introduced the first Ryzen series of processors, they've been bombarding us with uh, boosting algorithm names and overclocking systems. With Ryzen 1000, we had Sense MI. Sense MI, as AMD puts it, is a collection of smart features that can rapidly and efficiently tune power and performance. Specifically, we're talking about pure power, XFR, and Precision Boost. Precision Boost was basically a clock regulating algorithm that changes clock on usually two specific cores with precision in small 25 megahertz increments. And then there was XFR or extended frequency range. In that case, it took the temperature readings from your CPU and other places and boosted the clocks past the precision boost limits. So better cooler equaled better performance. Then with Ryzen 2000, we got XFR2 and Precision Boost 2. XFR2 was basically a more tuned version of the original, a relationship between clocks, power, and temperatures. And uh, Precision Boost 2 brought in a more tapered boost algorithm, where instead of just boosting two cores and the rest being at different clock speeds, the boost was spread out more throughout all of the cores. Apparently it would give you an extra 500 megahertz of total clocks. Now with the same generation, they did introduce Precision Boost Overdrive, or PBO, AMD's one-click overclocking feature. Now this is where things get interesting. It allowed the CPU to run at higher clocks and higher power, basically higher than the manufacturer's official specifications. And you know what happens uh, when you overclock a CPU? Well, besides better performance, well, you void your warranty or as AMD puts it, because Precision Boost Overdrive enables operations of the processor outside of specifications and in excess of factory settings, use of the feature invalidates the AMD product warranty and may also void warranties offered by the system manufacturer or retailer. Now, what if I told you that if you own an AMD GPU, like I do, and an AMD CPU, like I do, um, and you updated your GPU drivers recently, well, you might just have voided your CPU's warranty without knowing it. Well, that's because according to Igor's lab, AMD's Radeon software, that's the GPU software, actually alters CPU settings without you knowing it. The moment you enter the GPU profile section on the Adrenaline software, the newest version, a loading screen might appear that tells you that CPU overclocking failed. Why? Well, he noted that power limits and max boost frequencies were changed on the CPU. You can see here that the user had its overclocking set at manual. That's in the BIOS. So they carefully entered all of the undervolt and overclock settings that they wanted. Then they booted into the system, went to the Radeon software, had the error message, rebooted the computer, and boom, BIOS settings were changed again to automatic. Now, you might say, yeah, but that person overclocked their CPUs already or undervolted or whatever. So it doesn't matter if their warranty's gone, it was already gone. Well, that doesn't just happen if you overclocked yourself. If you never touched your BIOS settings, no OC, no undervolt, basically if you run stock, it will do the same thing. Now, let's be real. In terms of the actual warranty part of this story, no one really cares. We all know that they can't really verify if you've overclocked your CPU, unless it's either charred at the bottom or there's Vaseline in the pin. But the issue here is that this breaks a lot of people's efforts in getting the best out of their CPUs. If you've tweaked the hell out of it for efficiency and cooling by undervolting it, well, you might be affected. Or if you're overclocked for max performance, same thing. As someone who's been, you know, tinkering with overclocking on his systems for the last 12 years since my first PC build, it was a 1090T, instability, especially when it happens so suddenly and you have no explanation for it, is frustrating to say the least. You might think that your silicon degraded if you overclocked and it's suddenly downclocking on its own and that you'll never reach those same speeds again, or you might try to wonder why your system is unstable and try to fix it in some other ways when it was the company's fault to begin with. And in my opinion, the big issue is not the fact that the CPU software is bugging out, it's the fact that it's because of the GPU software that the CPU gets unstable. That shouldn't happen. Now, at least there are some fixes. 
They're annoying to implement since you have to go back to your BIOS to recreate an entirely new profile with your fan curves and you have to reproduce your past overclock settings. Or you can disable the Ryzen Master Module using the Radeon Software Slimmer. Now, keep in mind, this is a third party software, so it's at your own risk. But I mean, come on, AMD, you have testing facilities to test for these kinds of things. And you have an army of CPU and GPU users who literally download your beta software. Instead, you made everyone a beta tester in that case. And it's not the first time. Remember Ryzen 3000? Yeah, I remember. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much for today's video. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, right here to see the latest video on the llama to uh, subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.